What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, today we're going over Emerald Tau Shard Sarin. At long last, I finally got these. And yeah, it was definitely worth the wait. We got some of the most disgusting damage possible in Warframe here today. Uh, AoE blowing up everything, level 10,000 blowing them all up. And yeah, it's really, really good and powerful. So, let's get right into it. Before we do, Make sure you're sub this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. I appreciate all the support on the videos, guys. I'll also be live on stream later tonight, farming out some Warframe. Probably doing some fissures, maybe some arbitrations, maybe some Void Cascade. Who knows? So let's get right into it. All right. So this build today is going to be utilizing the new Emerald Tau Shards that, as far as I'm concerned, were basically just made for Saren. The effects we'll be utilizing today, we'll be utilizing four increased toxin proc damage shards, which is 45% toxin proc damage per, and then we've got one corrosive stack increasing shard, increasing corrosive maximum stacks from 10 to 13. This equates to 98% armor strip, uh, which is actually fine for most content. I will let you know that we do some level 10,000, uh, I did some level 10,000 with 98% armor strip. And the EHP difference between a level 10,000 enemy with 98% armor strip and 100% armor strip is pretty astronomical. So I would recommend for level 10,000 to go for full armor strip, which is sadly going to require two shard slots. Uh, but for everything normal, you can just use one shard slot uh, for your armor strip shards, and that's going to be great. So let's go ahead and show how that works against normal level enemies. So we're in the simulacrum right now, and we got some level 200 Bombard Eximus, Heavy Gunner Eximus, and Exogexta. These are all Grenier enemies with armor. And we're using a shot, the Sobek shotgun. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over here and we're going to cast our... Because this build, build is using Roar. So cast Roar, cast Toxic Lash, and throw like a, a Spore on them just to get some armor strip going. After one bullet, they're all going to be dead. So if you can see, the Chaining Explosion just blew them all up. And that's what you can actually expect in Mission too. So what is causing this? What What is going on here, honestly? Well, if you are a newer player, you definitely... I wouldn't be surprised if you're surprised by this, but uh, if you are an older player, this has been a setup that's been around for a long time. I have made probably four or five videos on Sobek Saren over like the years of making YouTube videos, with one of the oldest ones being from like 2018. So this is basically one of the final forms of that build. Uh, and as I stated earlier, we have Toxin Shard increase, Toxin Shard increase, Toxin Shard increase, Toxin Shard increase, and one Corrosive Stack increase. So, from some of the nerd math, some of my viewers have been telling me about, at level 10,000, for example, a level 10,000 Thrax with 98% armor strip has 100, and, 100, like 100 million EHP. A fully armor strip Thrax has 10 million EHP. So that should show how big of a difference it is. Like 10 times more damage required to kill a level 10,000 Thrax with only just one more armor, uh, or one, one more corrosive proc. So keep that in mind if you're planning level 10,000. Now, how is that shading explosion happening? I'm going to explain it in depth here for you guys. So it's going to come from the mod Acid Shells. Uh, enemies explode on death, dealing 450 corrosive damage. Also, plus 45% enemies' maximum health in a 15 meter radius. So what is causing this? It's, it's being caused by a few things. That percent health explosion does scale with Roar. We're using Roar from Rhino to like basically double our damage. So we're doubling that to like 9% of their health. And then we're also using Saren's Toxic Lash third ability, which does, that, that AoE corrosive proc will be giving a toxin proc that scales off enemy health as well. So if we stack these things together, and we also throw on things like Bane of the Grenier, actually the wrong, okay, you just watch those guys get one shot with the wrong mod on there, by the way. Good thing I have this, right? The Bane of the Grenier is gonna affect that Acid Shell's explosion with Saren's three. Also, plus Toxin mods are gonna affect Saren's three as well. So we got Toxin mod here, Toxin mod here, we, and a God Roll Riven for Saren on this build will have a Toxin on the Riven too. It's a must have stat if you wanna get a Riven for the Sobek. So utilizing all those things, uh, all we need to do basically is need to damage as many enemies as possible. So we've got Seeking Fury to shoot through multiple enemies. We've got Chilling Reload to just give us Viral because I don't actually have Nourish on this build. And we got Lock and Load to auto-reload our shotgun when it's holstered. Primary Blight is also basically just made for Saren. Increased multi-shot and crit damage on uh, Toxin Proc. We don't care about the crit damage, we only care about the multi-shot giving us more Toxin Procs to kill enemies faster. Okay, now that we've got the proper mod on the build, let's just go ahead and re of them one more time. Because I actually had Bane of the Corpus on there. Uh, so we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to cast Roar. 
89%, Toxic Lash. I could just I could use Venom Dose here too. And it should just be one bullet, basically. So Well, I couldn't even see what those numbers were, like multiple million, it looked like AoE through armor. But keep in mind they probably had 98% armor strip because of the shards. Okay, so yeah, the Sobek is the only weapon that can do this. There is no Kuva Sobek. There is no Sobek in Karnon. There's no Sobek Wraith. I hope we get one one day, but for right now, this is what I got. Now, additionally, you notice the Riven. This is pretty much a God Roll Riven. It's got multi shot, Band of the Grenier, Toxin, and plus recoil. You technically don't even need the multi shot, but the multi shot does help you kill enemies uh, initially. Now, additionally, this is an like anti Grenier specific Riven. For the Corpus, I've got an anti Corpus Riven too. This one's going to make it where it's. You might notice it's got plus Toxin and plus Damage to the Corpus. Those are the stats you want, depending on what faction you're fighting. Now, there is no Damage to Corrupted Riven. That doesn't exist in the game yet. And there's also no Bane of the Murmur, for example. So, we do have Smite, uh, Cleanse, or Prime Cleanse Corrupted, so you're going to have to run that if you're doing a Corrupted mission. But yeah, you're kind of out of luck on a Riven. Try to just get a Toxin one. Like, honestly, if you have a Riven for other factions that has plus Toxin on it, it will work for Corrupted, too. Because that's all you can really do. Now, for the, the Corpus, I also have a Punch Through Riven that lets you shoot through more enemies. The reason that Punch Through is so good is because as long as you damage them with the Sobek, it will have that Toxin proc on them from Saren's 3, and they can start shading explosions on nearby enemies. Let's start going over the build, and I'm actually going to get some Steel Path gameplay as well here, so you can see how this works in mission. Now, I'm showing you in the simulacrum in a controlled environment. Here is an actual Steel Path Survival, um, and I have done plenty of Steel Path Survival runs with this build. Uh, but as you can see... Melee Influence got nerfed, but this is still pretty good. Uh, we can fire our Sobek Shotgun, and it will basically just kill the entire room. As long as your third ability is active and your, your Roar is active, you do so much damage that even shooting a little tiny Butcher with their, their low amount of maximum health will start a chain explosion to nearby enemies. Now, you are seeing Spores and Acid Shells going right now. Um, I would recommend to throw on Spores. Like I said, the Armor Strip is pretty helpful uh, for the Steel Path Grenier. You don't need it technically, but it will help the chaining quite a bit to have those Spores out there with a 90%, 98% Strip. Now let's start going over the build and uh, what you can basically... What options you have? Because we're not even close to done right now, guys. Uh, I'm using Roar in this build, but I have actually three builds I'd recommend if you want to use Sobek Saren. Uh, the number one one would probably be Roar, though. Number two would definitely be Zata's Whisper. So let's go over the builds uh, that I'm going to be showcasing today. Now keep in mind, for level 10,000, I am going to give you some uh, special criteria on why I'm doing this certain build for level 10,000, and we'll go over that in a bit. All right, so for the first build, the build that you're seeing in the footage, we have uh, the Roar Saren and the... The Roar is actually going to be over 100% once we get Molt Augmented fully stacked up. So as far as mods, uh, Energy Nexus to get some easy energy regenerative sort of standing there. I like this personally. You don't need to run this. You could run you know, Streamline or something else in that slot. Additionally, uh, we're really trying to squeeze up every point of mods here. I don't want to really reform her. So we don't have a maxed up Prime Continuity. You would be technically with like what? Like 10% more duration if you had a maxed up Prime Continuity. Couldn't fit it on the build. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much it. So as far as the rest of the stuff that we got, Venom Dose to help kill the first enemy, because you have to you have to get a kill with the Sobek to start the, the death chain, so that's pretty important. Also, since, to be honest, the Sobek's not very good against Acolytes, we are using the Lex Prime and Karnon. This will buff our Lex Prime and Karnon a ton to make one-shotting Acolytes pretty much, like, really, really easy. Prime Flow, because we got some pretty high-cost abilities. Uh, Roar costs 116. Toxic Lash costs 77. Molt 77 and 38 for spores. So that's pretty good there. Um, you don't need to run this if you don't want to. If you can run an like equilibrium or something. Maybe if you didn't want to go full green shard, you could put an equilibrium shard on Saren, and that would alleviate some of the energy issues. Because there are sometimes energy issues with this build. Uh, Rolling Guard, just when you go invincible, I'm gonna I am using Vazer on this build, so I'll show you how that works too. Um, and the rest of the stuff is power strength, power strength, power strength for big, big roar buffs and big toxic lash buffs and all that kind of stuff. Now, as far as the other builds on Saren, oh, by the way, the Arcanes are Molt Augmented on kill, gives you increased power strength and Molt Efficiency. While your shields are active, you get increased duration. You could definitely change this stuff up for other stuff for personal preference, but this is what I like to run. So we got uh, Nourish Saren. I believe this is for, uh, well, this, this is an alternative. So basically, here's what I want to tell you guys right now. Now, for high-level missions, Nourish is getting nerfed, but it's still going to be like meta, honestly. So here's the thing. Make sure that if you're doing a level 10,000 mission, you have somebody on your team that's running Nourish, and something that's running Roar. So make sure that Roar and Nourish are both active. So if you organize in a full squad ahead of time, like 
Yo, dude, I'm running Roar. Are you running Nourish? If the guy says no, you might want to switch to Nourish. Because Nourish is so good, uh, it's actually a nice little buffer, too. Because we're not actually using Viral damage in any way. Well, I guess technically we were modding for Viral on the Sobek, but we're not buffing Viral damage in any way. So our Viral procs are coming from basically our Sobek, and we don't, we're not even using Viral procs, actually. We're just letting everything die to base damage. That's how powerful this is. We're increasing those Toxin procs so much with the Shards that the enemies just die through armor, but... Yeah, if you have Nourish active too, you'll have no energy problems. And for level 10,000, that Nourish uh, viral increase will be helpful for self, self-priming self Thrax and all that stuff. So, uh, last build before we go into some more gameplay. We got Zata's Whisper. Didn't really use this that much, but... Um, yeah, this is actually a, an arbitration, but we'll see the arbitration uh, in a bit here. But Zata's Whisper works with six. So, basically, the way Zata's Whisper works, you use an extra hit of damage, uh, and that will combine with Toxic Lash, like basically like three total hits of damage. This could be nice with the Sobek for chaining further. I don't really like it over the Roar, though. I think Roar is better. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and show how that works. You'll hear multiple ticks of the Zata's Whisper re -proking. But on these guys, that probably ends up going to be really easy to show because they're just going to die so quick. Uh, so, same thing for our procs on them because this is a control situation here pretty much the same exact thing so it's gonna be diff you're, you're gonna be telling uh seeing it differently in mission and you can decide yourself which one you like better i would like i said i like roar better but zata's whisper is technically viable now let's get into some high level mission gameplay so you can see how the sobek can handle level 10,000s. let's start off with a level 10,000 corpus uh so we have the steel path void cascade my go-to level 10,000 mission well, that's not the right clip uh Level 10,000 mission uh, in Void Cascade, and here's a big group of Corpus. It's now uh, just let you, it's kind of hard to find a big group of enemies in Void Cascades. So this is the best I could get, but as you can see, they're all dead. Level 10,000 in one shot. So this will scale to that level. Now Roar actually was active in that clip, so if you don't have Roar active, it will be a smaller Toxin proc, but it should still be enough to kill these guys. I don't, they probably have like a million EHP, and that what was that like four million. So we're like overkilling them like three times over. But you also have to remember, not every you're not going to have this. Like the damage is not going to be like that in every situation if you are uh, you know not viral proccing and stuff like that. So here we are in an arbitration. Now I'm not using the Sobek in the arbitration, obviously. I'm using the Ogress. Uh, but Saren is very good in arbitrations because she can buff her damage so much. Uh, the Zata's Whispers be an extra hit of damage. The Toxic Lash with extra hit of damage, and the Ogress is going to be having that fire on the ground. You can spawn kill drones very easily with Zata's Whisper on Saren. Um, now, as far as the Toxin proc shards on the Ogress here, um, since Terran, uh, Terran, Saren's third ability gives a guaranteed Toxin proc, that's why we're using these Toxin proc shards. It's making like every hit of damage so much more powerful. And we're using Percent Health Damage Explosions like the Sobek shells, or Acid shells, uh, it just it just means that we're doing like pretty much unconditional one shots that can chain, and the reason it chains, guys, is because when they do that explosion from acid shells, that will apply Saren's three, and then Saren's three is going to be basically, I, I guess it considers the the game considers it a weapon a little bit, where it's the explosion explodes off, and then it goes to another enemy, then that enemy's poison, then the next guy gets poison, and the poison goes, like, it, it's just a chaining explosion, and it's pretty much better than melee influence. Not that melee, melee influence got nerfed, so. Hopefully they don't end up nerfing this, but like I said, I've made like five videos on this over like a long time, so I would be very surprised if they decided to nerf it now. Now, as far as what is different on this build compared to before, like why is it so much better? It mainly comes down to the fact that um, the Toxin Proc shards are really good, actually. We're getting like basically double damage with Toxin Procs here. Let's get some uh, Cascade gameplay here. We're basically doing double damage with Toxin Procs uh, compared to if we weren't before, um, and that's going to be, you no. Know, a big deal, at least to me. Uh, you know, there are times you could one-shot level 10,000 without these Toxin Proc shards, but it's just so nice to have it. Now, my Sobek Saren is one of my go-to builds, and, it, and I was taking a break on it for a while, but yeah. Um, as far as Rivens, guys, get that Toxin, get that Band of Grenier. If you don't want to only focus on Grenier, I guess you could go for, like, just Toxin and something else decent, like Multi-Shot or something. But yeah, getting the Band of the Grenier or the Band of the Corpus is a massive, massive buff to your damage here. And you saw at the beginning, like... I was doing noticeably less damage with Bane of the Corpus versus Bane of the Grenier because Saren's three is and that explosion is influenced by Bane of the Grenier. If it were fighting Grenier, that is. Also, would not I would not really recommend running Vazarin for level ten thousands. Uh, the damage for it is not really great. Speaking of level ten thousands and Vazarin, let's go ahead and show how you can survive with this build. Okay, so we're just gonna go on the Roar Zatas Whisper build, and I'm gonna unpause these enemies. Uh, let's let's hope I can actually do this properly without just dying in the video. So, gonna go ahead and unpause them. Now we're running a Vazarin Focus Tree. 
as soon as we take damage, what we do, we dash through ourselves. We are invincible. So we just wait until we want to do that again. Shield breaks. Redash. This is some cheesy stuff, but it actually does work. So this is what you can run. I did run this for level 10,000. So would not recommend it because you don't have the matter right damage. But as you can see, I was face taking those guys for a while. It's a combination of the Magus Cloud Arcane and the Vazarin Focus Tree. When we dash through ourselves, we are become invincible for five seconds, I think it is. So, Vazarin Focus Tree. Now, you can run Matarai, of course, uh, but it's called Protective Sling. So, five seconds of invincibility. And we also got the Magus Cloud Arcane, which increases the range of our Void Sling, as it's called nowadays. So, Magus Cloud. I was using this for Void Cascade just to, like, break the Exilizers, but this actually works great with this, just to make you be even more lazy. So, yeah, as far as the weapons that are not Saren and the, the Sobek, we have the Lex Prime. This is our Acolyte one-shotter. It's really hard-hitting. And uh, since plus Toxin mods scale Saren's 3, we have a plus Toxin Riven. Sadly, a really bad negative, but it's what I got. So, uh, this is just to be for one-shot Acolytes. we got base Corrosive. We throw on uh, Venom Dose for even more Corrosive. And, yeah, even though we only have one tick of Toxin with this terrible negative Riven, it's still like a million damage Toxin proc anyway, so they die in one hit regardless. Just go ahead and do... I didn't even need to armor strip them, technically, but... Before you're in the Incarnon, that's kind of the damage you're expecting. Once you're in the Incarnon, it's just completely over for these guys, so... And Acolyte's not gonna really like that. Like a multi-million corrosive crit. Acolytes are weak to crit. They are not really... So status is not the best against them, so... We just kill them in one shot, not even worry about status on them, so... Yep, build here. Now, I could technically try to fit on another Toxin mod somehow, but it's okay. I, I think this is gonna be good the way it is. And as far as the melee, the melee is not used in this build, but it's the Prados. Uh, mainly, mainly just for movement speed. Parkour velocity and sprint and slide. That is great with her molt, giving that stuff multiplied. The build is a corrosive build, I believe. And it is not used at all. Like, I'm pretty much only equipping this as a melee, uh, as a mobility stat stick. Now, as far as uh, other suggestions, like as far as weapons and all that, uh, Saren's one of those frames that can do lots and lots of different weapons. Um, some of my favorites, like for example, in that, in that level 10,000 Cascade run, I was using the Dual Toxicist. Uh, to test out the whole 98% strip thing. Let's see if we can get some uh, footage of that. But, um, yeah, like I said, I would not recommend doing a 98% strip on level 10,000. I'd recommend doing a 100% strip on level 10,000. Because, uh, yeah, those guys... I mean, it's up to you. Do you, do you want to do 100 million EHP damage or uh, 10 million EHP damage? Because in this footage, I was using the 98% strip and the Thrax were taking a little bit longer to kill, and I was using some of the best stuff in the game on Saren. So I think if any frame can get away with 98% strip, it is Saren with her Venom Dose and all that. But you just don't need to. So you can just go back to, if you want to, you can you know put the shards on there to get the 13 procs for normal gameplay. If you're playing at level 10,000, Spend 30% Bile to remove the shard and put the shard back on for more uh, Corrosive procs. There's a level 10,000 Thrax. It wasn't exactly a slow kill, but it I wouldn't call it a fast kill. I'm pretty spoiled on those insta-kills on level 10,000 Thrax. So, I, yeah, going forward, I would probably just... I would actually normally bring the shard... I would do the full armor strip shards. But yeah, for this, it was an experiment. Vazarin and 90% strip was an experiment. And I'd say the Vazarin part failed, but the 90% strip part was not as bad as expected. So... Hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. If you have any questions about Saren, let me know. I'll be on stream in a bit here. Um, yeah, she's really, really good. I, oh, and as far as, like, would I recommend this? Yes, I would highly recommend this if you are a Saren player. Um, now, I might do a video, Korra versus Saren, like purple shards versus green shards, which one was more worth, but that's not going to be today. So I think that this is extremely good. It's probably some of the best way you can use green shards in the game. I'll be trying to theorycraft some other green shard options in the future. But yeah, um, Saren with like no toxin shard procs, increaser. Now, also keep in mind too, these are not the only effects that are good on Saren with these shards. The corrosive uh, damage, ability damage increaser is great with our spores. Um, the... The increased toxin one's probably the best, to be honest, but uh, the toxin increase, or sorry, the corrosive increaser one works with their spores very well. Uh, if you want to do full strip, you can do two green normal shards, or maybe two green tau shards if you only want to do tau, like me, so. The other effects are relatively weak, but yeah, you got some good ones here, so. I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate all support, and yeah, I'm not, I am not done playing this build, so I'll probably be playing this build quite a bit going forward on stream and in video, so keep an eye out for it. Alright guys, take it easy. Peace!